It's Friday Night Lights here on RGR. Welcome in, everybody. The Kansas City Chiefs are trading Legereus Need to the Tennessee Titans. Not the trade that you were looking for, but it is the trade that has calmed down, at least as we understand it tonight. So this is in finalization phase. We are hearing numbers. We're starting to get an idea of what's going on with Legereus Need. A lot of things go into this deal, but right now, it looks like it is Legereus Need to the Titans for a 2025 third-round pick and a swap this draft cycle right now coming up in a little over a month, 36 days, I believe. Not the compensation you are looking for. I understand your frustration. I understand why it's there. We're going to go through it all. I've been I've been out uh, with the kids tonight. hope you guys are all doing well. Um, Terry, nice to see you. Uh, Justin, nice to see you. Uh, we're going to get to the questions. And uh, if you guys would do, as Justin said, you don't have to necessarily, you know, do something to the to the button, but, you know, just like the button. You don't have to, like, do all this. But, hey, interesting take there, Justin. Uh, like, sub, hit the bell. If you don't know me or you're just catching this year, Chiefs Kingdom, you're tr tooling around YouTube. I'm Ryan Tracy. Uh, you can find me all around uh, Chiefs Kingdom in terms of, of content, podcasts, etc. cetera. Uh, I'm a former strength and conditioning coach, former physiologist and consultant on personnel decisions and evaluations. And evaluation is what this comes down to, is what others see and are willing to do versus what the Chiefs were willing to do. I'm a little disappointed. For those of you who don't know me, I've been running this channel for quite a long time, and I've been covering this team Going on 12 years, I've been covering the draft since I was a coach back 20 years ago. That's where I come from. And I found Legereus Need in the draft cycle, looking at one of his teammates, was absolutely ecstatic when they picked him coming out of La Tech. And I thought he was a guy that would be able to grow into a meaningful contributor. Let me be honest. He even surpassed my expectations. I was hopeful he would be a guy that could be a solid starter for you take away half the field. I didn't expect him to grow into a shutdown. I'm going to take the best receiver you got and the best receiver in the league, Tyreek Hill, and take him away. I didn't see that coming. He's that good. And I think that's the worst part about this trade right now. And I know a lot of you are upset. We're going to get to your comments and questions. Uh, if you want to get on the show tonight, throw a little love my way and uh, towards the channel and all my guys here. Uh, like Justin has and throw that super chat. I guarantee you I will respond to your super chat. Uh, I'm going to try to get a lot to you, a lot of the questions as well. You regulars know, throw some question marks at the beginning. It'll help me sort them out here as I am flying solo as it's late. Um, <clears throat> is it worse than losing Matthew? It's not. Solely because of the presence of one Trent McDuffie. Let's be honest. McDuffie played as well as Legereus this season for the most part. Yes, he was recognized all pro when Legereus wasn't. Yes, he got a little bit more accolades from um, you know TV broadcasters. But on truth, in terms of physicality, Legereus is the better physical corner. Trent is the, the guy that can step into his role, and I certainly expect him to do that. They have other guys that will step in and, and grow their roles. The thing that's going to change here, in my opinion, is you're not looking to run Josh on one side, Joshua Williams, and Jalen Watson on the other. You're looking for one of those guys to step up to take the luxurious role on one side. Trent McDuffie's going to take the other side. If if I know Dave Merritt and Steve Spagnuolo and what they want to do, they're going to put their best player in the best position. And that is, unless one of the two backup guys that can play your outside corners really, really step up this offseason – through OTAs, uh, obviously mini camp, and then training camp, most likely Trent McDuffie's going to be playing outside next season. And I'm perfectly fine with that. Trent McDuffie can handle it. It is a different kind of scenario. It is not as physical. Trent McDuffie has come a long way from a kid who didn't play much physicality, didn't play much press man in college. He's developed those skills. He has that in him, but it's not his forte. He gets by that way, certainly. Uh, and he has a tendency to need to use his catch-up speed, which he uses very effectively. Legereus Need is a stand on the, the line of scrimmage and knock-you-out kind of corner. That's not what they have going forward. 
this changes the draft priorities. We'll probably get to that coming up later here. But in terms of losing Matthew, um, it's up there, but I don't think it's quite as bad because you have some veteran presence and you have some emerging talent, specifically in McDuffie, uh, that will take up the slack for this. But it is it is a miss. Now, there's a lot of factors that go into this. Um, it is going to be very difficult to convince me that they got good value here. And I know a lot of people are going to throw that on Veach. And Terry, I'm not calling you out. I'm just saying a lot of people are going to have this take. But I'm going to play devil's advocate for a minute. I agree. This is terrible value. I would have just bitten the bullet and probably stayed with him on the tag or tried to get him to come down and reach a deal for two years. I know he doesn't want that. It's probably not in his best interest, so I wouldn't be surprised if that was a difficult situation. I think Brett Veach was faced with the fact that he's out of range uh, for a giant contract uh, for the Chiefs. They can't afford to put more investment in him at 27 years old. At 27 years old, it was difficult to find teams that were willing to spend what they're going to have to spend, uh, a rumored 19 per year for the Jerry Sneed in Tennessee. The problem is the medicals and the age. The knee is an issue. They got the Titans to give them compensation. It's a third next year, a third that they're going to use to address one of their problems, which is right guard, center, or middle linebacker. One of those guys are going to have to be replaced is what this tells me. This is planning for next season when you have a class of guys that you have to try to re-sign. This is insurance so that you can try to get something done if you are unable to re-sign your big three free agents next time this year. And unfortunately, while that will help that situation, it doesn't help here. This is not good value, but it is the best value they could get for Legere Sneed now. And that's the problem. His performance has been there. Uh, as Trez always said, shout out T, uh, contract year always wins. Undefeated. And Legere's played lights out to get to this point to prove that he could. The problem is for most teams projecting that he can do that again and again. My big concern here, the only thing that I would question is if you can get Tennessee to be willing to give him that contract, they should have been able, they should have been willing to give up more compensation as well. But the knee in particular is a problem. The general concern about whether he'll see the end of this contract or whether there'll be anything left is the reason. And I, it was an uphill battle to begin with. I fully admit that. But I do think this was the best they could do. I just wouldn't have pulled the trigger because I don't think it's good enough. It also says a lot about their plans. And I think some of you are already getting to that point. But let me answer a couple of these quick. Uh, Caleb, what do we do with the extra cap space? That's exactly it. They're going to plug two, maybe three holes with this. They're going to be able to sign some low-level third tier free agents now to plug some gaps. It's likely another possibility at wide receiver. It's likely a left tackle. Donovan Smith might be right back in the fold to come back and compete. It might be another defensive tackle, one that's specifically ready to rush the passer. It could be a replacement corner. I don't think that's the way it'll go. I don't think corner is going to be a free agent acquisition. I do think corner has now become a higher priority in this draft. We're going to talk about that coming up. But that's what I think the cap space is going to go to. And Justin, uh, yes, it was 7.6 when I looked earlier today. That 19.08 or whatever it is is coming off there too. So roughly 27, yes. I believe that is exactly it. Uh, Brandon, I'm sorry. I must have missed the email and the tweet. Apologies. Um, did, you, did it go to RGR podcasts, plural, at Gmail? If so, send it to me one more time, and I will double. I will double check. Brandon, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad, bad news. If this is the first you're seeing of this, um, Will, nice to see you, buddy. Appreciate you, uh, Leon. Appreciate it, Chiefs. Tighten up, uh, Leon. Welcome in, and hey, just a shout out to my guy Ken, uh, long time covering the Titans. Uh, I will get into what Legarius brings and, and beyond the physicality. He does have the speed to turn and run. He does have the tenacity. He brings the edge in terms of attitude, the nastiness that Frank Clark used to bring on the front. So there is a, a, 
there is a, a bigger upgrade than just his position, just being able to combat the number one receiver on the other team. He will lift the attitude and the aggression and honestly, the dog out of everybody in the, the defensive backfield for whatever team he plays for. I fully believe that. So that's what you're getting in Tennessee. And I appreciate the help, Leon. Uh, should we be, definitely go after Odell? And Trey White from the Bills. I think Trey White, unfortunately, is probably in a very similar situation where his physicality is is sapped. I don't know that he can be the player that he was. I don't think they're going to make that investment. Like I said, I don't think they're going free agent corner at this point. Sign Tyler Boyd and then target uh, best player available or corner in the first round. Tyler Boyd uh, is an interesting one. I'm surprised he doesn't have a home. I, he, he is one guy that I think could be a low-level signing here. Um, but it's got to still be left tackle. And I do think then it would allow you to shift either defensive tackle, uh, cornerback, whoever's best on your board there, Gavin. So I, I like the way that you're thinking. Uh, Justin, thank you for another. Super, appreciate you. Hit that like button. <laughs> that like button has needs. I get it. <laughs> Attack that thing. Make it feel good. I'm with you. Um, DC, nice to see you. Thank you. Everyone was so fixated on getting a second, but I don't think the Chiefs ever made a demand that high in public. No, they never would in public. I think they just wanted more than a third comp pick, and they weren't going to pay him. And that's the key. They had decided, I think, long ago, and I've said this pretty much all since the Super Bowl, that the worst-case scenario that the Chiefs wanted to avoid was him playing on the tag. They said in public, actually the reverse, D.C., they said, hey, we can handle him playing on the tag. They never wanted to. The problem with this is this is likely – it is better than that third round comp pick next year. If you if you had let him go, you'd get 96 or 96 to 104, someone in there. Here, no offense to the Titans with Will Levis at quarterback, you're getting a pick probably in the 70s, is my guess. So it is an upgrade that much, but it is it is not what I I would rather have a takeaway corner for another season than I would that third round pick. That's just me. But if they made the determination that we just can't pay him, we couldn't even pay him on a two-year if he took 14 a year. If they just made that determination that they couldn't make that investment again, then yes, it was get anything you can, however little it is, let Legereus get his payday, good for him, let him move on, reset your room, and go get what you need to get done this year. Hope you're doing well, doctor. Nice to see you. Um, I'm picking out the questions here. I'm going to try to get to as many as I can, everybody. Um, I am all over the place tonight, James, and I apologize. Uh, I happen to have a video scheduled to go up just as this broke. That was purely by accident. Um, you know, it, it, as we're going through family time and draft prep around here, uh, Dan and I are stretched very thin. And so uh, I'm trying to pre record or pre cut um, some. Usually, if I, if I replay part of a, uh, if I put a, a video that posts that may have been part of a live stream, that means that it's an important piece that I want to reiterate. And for those who might not be able to watch, uh, you know, when we're on for an hour and 20 minutes, a lot of folks can't make the whole thing. So I try to take the important parts and repost them so that everybody can see them. That's what I did tonight. And it just happened to happen as the announcement were coming in. It was not by design. So apologies for, for you know, not being Johnny on the spot like I usually am. Uh, but had to get home with the kids and do this stuff. So now, now I'm here and, and we're making the most of it. Appreciate you, James. Um, Nazi season. Nick, I'm, I'm glad that you bring him up because that's exactly how I feel that it's going. Like I said earlier, I expect McDuffie to go outside. Nazi Johnson, Nick Jones are the prime candidates to be the next nickel corner. I would normally say Chamar Connor, except that Mike Edwards went elsewhere. Now you could still leave him as the third corner, the third safety, but maybe have him play some nickel and do a mix. I think he's capable of both, but I do think they'd rather have more um, predefined roles. I do think they want Chamar to be that third safety, and I do think they're hoping that either Nazi or Nick Jones can take that nickel spot. I will also say this: I think there are a lot of viable nickel corners in this corner class in the draft. So don't be surprised. But uh, appreciate the super chat, buddy, and the support as always. Hope you're doing well. Um, Terry, any free agent corners that will make uh, that will work well in the system? I, I really don't think so. I'll try to pull it up here while we're discussing just to see um, what might be out there because I honestly have not uh, checked as of late. 
in terms of who's made some signings and who hasn't. Um, clearly, by the question, Trey White, may, it looks like he's probably still out there. Um, I'm pulling that up, and I will share it with you guys here shortly. And we'll pull that onto the screen, hopefully, if everything goes as I hope. Okay, put that in play. We'll take a look at that, and I'll try to get this where it's a little bit more sizable. Give you guys a better view without making it too ugly. So, this is all the signings that have been completed on down to here. Xavier Howard, older. Don't know that I'm ready to put him in man situation. If the Chiefs feel that they need to play more zone, and, and they have been... The split's about the same, but it was, I think, a little bit more zone this year than I expected, so maybe they're leaning that way. You could maybe look at Xavier. Um, J.C. Jackson has been run back and forth and back and forth. The, pay, the Pats don't want him. The Chargers don't want him. The Pats don't want him again. I don't know. I'm not going back to Steven Nelson. Uh, I'm not coming back uh, for Devontae Maddox. Stephon Gilmore is, I think, going to have to call it a career pretty soon. Um, he might get one more bite of the apple this year, but it's not going to be in Kansas City, I don't think. Could be wrong, but you never know. Um, so it, the, the pickets are slim, in my opinion, as we look here. Uh, Eli Apple is, is 28. I didn't realize that. Chandon Sullivan I've always liked. Um, I wouldn't mind that one. i uh, like to see what he could do uh, in the Spags Merritt system. Um, I, I do kind of like that now that I see it. So there's one option for you that I would be behind. Um, Nazi, this is actually, he was tendered as an restrict, uh, restricted rights. He's, he's there. So um, I, I think it's, I think it's draft pick. I think that's the most likely scenario now, Terry. Steeman, hope you're doing well. Thanks for the support, buddy. Creed and Bolton extension is now on the board. Donovan is almost guaranteed at left tackle. I, I agree with both of those things. And Trey's going to be in the mix, too, for an extension. Um, if not, that third-round pick might come in handy for selecting the replacement for one of those guys as well. We're going to have to see how it all un, uh, unfolds as well. Yeah, the injuries are a concern, um, but I don't think it's anything that's going to – preclude him from playing um i know that they liked him in the locker room i know they like that they can rely on him as a veteran who's seen it been there that kind of thing um i'm interested here and iceberg that's exactly where my head went to um bringing back mike dan i think is going to be important yes they have some edges uh, i know some folks are, are worried about edges um they have developmental edges out there so they do need to bring those along I just don't know if they're comfortable yet. So it's an outside possibility, but I think it's more of a draft selection uh, rather than a free agent kind of thing. Um, will there be a compensatory pick? No, this is a trade. So they're getting their compensation as defined in the trade. There will be no comp pick. He will not be in the formula. Uh, amazing Snyderman. Uh, any comp picks for a transaction like this or does they just have to walk in free agency? Uh, they would have to sign in free agency away from the team. So this will not have any comp pick whatsoever. Um, I made a clip from uh, from my super chat that ended in case he ascends stream last Tuesday, 37 seconds. Funny popped up on my popped my content cherry. Well done, Justin. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're preparing for the X show. I'm gonna go build that thing. I think I think you're gonna have to jump in and get get your hands dirty, buddy. Pono, hope you're doing well, buddy. Bakhtiari possibility? I don't think so. I think he's pretty cooked as well. Um, I think they would lean towards Donovan out of the two of them because of the experience factor. Just my thought, but I, I don't know. Uh, Jerome, hey, thanks for being here, buddy. You know, uh, it, it'd be kind of silly if I was just talking to myself. So welcome and uh, cheers to you. Um, Gavin, uh, now that Snead is traded, what's more likely this year, a trade up or a trade back? Uh, unfortunately, Gavin, a trade up is off the table now because you didn't get any more ammunition. If they had gotten even a third this year, draft cycle they could have tried to move up some um, they still could but they'd be sacrificing depth and i think that's right now something that they're a little bit concerned about otherwise they would have gone and and let him play on the tag and been okay uh iceberg that is my concern as well um clearly the titans weren't that concerned with it i don't know what that means i just think it's i think it's trouble <clears throat> uh did they tag him too soon 
Were they just trying to be transparent? Give Snead a chance to really test the market. I think he deserves that. I'm sad it hurts. I'm sad to see him go as well. One of my favorite players and a guy that I really want to see on this roster. And then it happened. And so I've gotten to enjoy this. Um, but I, I think this wasn't that they messed it up. I don't think there's anything they could have done otherwise. I think this is just a combination of there weren't many suitors. And the ones that were were either going to pay him or trade capital for him. And they had to do both in order to get it done. And in the end, I don't think that Legarius was going to agree to anything less than the compensation. And he was in control of making sure that he got paid rather than caring about what the Chiefs got in compensation. And so when it came to an either or, I think he had to do what he said and get himself paid. I don't hold that against him. I think that's what's good for him and his family. And I think he needed to do that. It is officially midnight. Welcome in. <laughs> it is after dark at RGR. Uh, do you think we're going to draft another corner? And thanks for being the best Chiefs coverage. I appreciate you, Jason, and thank you for saying that. And I do think they're going to draft a corner for sure. I figured it was a possibility in general already, but I think now it becomes a higher priority. It could be one of the top 100 picks. That's what I think this changes. Um, Let's say... Bradley, uh, Mr. William, uh, appreciate you. That's That's a good point. Um, I had not heard that, but I'm sure at his point in his career, uh, Xavier is probably really wanting to play for a contender. We'll see. He's already 30. Um, I, I, I felt like he fell off pretty good last year. The fact they would that the Dolphins would walk away from him, I think that was significant. What are they losing? Um, they're eating 23 million in order to do this. Um, so I was a little surprised by that, but. You know, if the Chiefs feel that he can get it done still in their system, okay. Um, I'm not going to balk. I'm going to let him come to camp and <clears> – excuse me. I won't complain about it. Um, let's see. I'm a Nazi guy as well. I'm really hopeful. Obviously, anytime you're coming back from a serious injury like that, you never know the timeline, but I hope that he's good to go. I thought he looked great last year. For all you fans, it's spelled Chiefs. Uh, maybe I misspelled it. Sorry. Uh, my grammar and spelling is absolutely terrible. So if that's on me, Justin, uh, I, t I take the full hit. Um, exactly, Ryan. He's got he's got what most guys dream of. He's got multiple Super Bowl rings, and now he's guaranteed fifty five million. This pays for. I mean, you guys remember he, one of the big things he got when uh, he bought his mom a car. Like he's going to take care of his whole family. He just had a kid. Like his kids are set. You know what I mean? Like he's accomplished his goals by signing this deal and agreeing to this. So, hey, he's he's all good. I will not hold it against him at all. And honestly, he's already 27. This is his last big chance. So I'm, I'm not going to throw any dirt at him. Holly, glad you made it in. Nice to see you. Uh, and I appreciate you. Sorry it's so late, you guys. I was uh, I was a little tied up earlier. Uh, unrelated, drop my first beer review video next week. I am ready for it. Everybody go check out Thunderous' channel. I appreciate you, buddy. Um, good for you. Uh, beer is always fun. Uh, I need to get back to the RGR Craft Channel because I haven't put anything on it for, for a bit. Maybe we'll do a crossover, pal. Uh, let's see. Just trying to get to all your questions here, folks, as we as we move through. I don't think it's possible uh, we use this 25 third to trade up this year. I could still see that happening possibly, but I don't think anybody's going to give any value for it. I don't think it'll move the needle enough for you to get anything done this year. Um, why can't they trade the pick they just got also, uh, and left tackle wide receiver, uh, our first rounder this year. I mean, they could, but, but again, a third rounder this year is probably only worth a fourth, maybe a fifth in terms of trade capital now. So I, I just don't see them doing it. I see this as a preparation for the next year is, is what I think. Um, okay, a couple more, and we will let you guys go for the evening. I'm sorry it's midnight. It's just the way that it goes sometimes. Uh, I think the Chiefs decided not to have another year like uh, with the CG, uh, Chris Jones negotiations. This allows them to spend on some other players. Uh, these are the team outweighed what both Reek and LJ needed, and that's fair. And he, in the end, they helped him get what he needed. They were, they were able to move it. They could have just said, no, we're not going to take that compensation. We're going to leave him on the tag. And he's going to get that one year. And honestly, it would have been a detriment to Legarius um, for him to come back and play on the tag because at 28 and a knee issue and longevity, there would have been much less interest, I'm, I'm pretty sure, especially if he was a free agent. So good point, Oregon. Uh, I think we should 
go not safe for work mode live <laughs> after midnight and gonna let it all hang out. All right, that's that's gonna be on that other channel, brother. <laughs> I will get that down. Let's see. Um, I'd love to see Jalen Watson change his uniform number from zero to thirty-five. Cool. I, I'm down. Whatever, he, whatever he likes. Uh, appreciate all the hard work. Thank you, Ben. I appreciate you guys for being here. Uh, nearly four hundred folks in here at midnight. So hey, cheers to you uh, again. Sorry it had to be so late. Let Veach cook. Y'all know uh, by now. Absolutely. Um, in the end, they had to come to a hard decision. They made it, and they got the best compensation they could, which was not much. Uh, would love to see that be more, but I can't really blame them. The market is what it, what it is, and and I'm sure they took long enough to get this done. I thought they were going to try to hold out longer, and maybe they were seeing a diminished interest, so maybe they just had to pull pull the, the trigger now. So I'm glad that they did. I'm glad that you guys are here, and I'm glad that we got it done. So uh, again, sorry for the late hour. Thanks for jumping in here. I appreciate you all. Every super chatter, every member, appreciate you guys. It's going to be a weekend. I got a couple of clips coming up. Um, and then we are going to do, I'm going to try to pre-record a mock draft for you. Totally, totally pounded this weekend with, with activities that I need to be at. So I will give it my best shot. Definitely Q&A on Monday and look for a clip, if not on Sunday. A lot to go on and we'll start looking at how we spend money here coming up next time. So have a great Saturday. Enjoy your weekend. We'll talk to you soon.